How you doing guys? Today we are continuing some work on the Little Mule's transmission. Uh, this transmission originally came out of a Wheel Horse 416 in the late 80s. And after looking at the Torrington bearings in the uh, transmission, I decided that I would just replace most of them. There's basically five bearings I'm not replacing. And that is the two big carrier bearings uh, for two reasons. One, they appear to be perfectly fine. And number two, these are quite pricey um, if you can find them. So I know there's one guy on the Wheel Horse forum that sells them, but these are good. Going to keep them. And then the main cluster gear shaft has, uh, I believe, four um, four Torrington bearings, open Torrington bearings on the shaft, and they appear to be fine. Plus, it's below the oil line, so they're totally bathed in oil all the time. It's not like you know oil has to kick up and and lubricate the torrenting bearings here on the side case for the most part. So actually those six bearings are not going to be replaced, but I did get replacement bearings for the big brake shaft, the cluster gear um, brake shaft, I guess if you want to call it on this particular transmission, both of these are obviously closed end and that is the input shaft, uh, the open one. And that is really the hardest one to get out. And the reason why it's hard to get out or, little bit, I don't even want to say tricky, but a little bit, you know, cumbersome is because this gear is still in place. Now you can remove that gear if you want, if you want to press out the shaft and all that stuff, and but there's no point in doing that. Um, so you just get like, I just use a extended socket or a deep well socket that fits just on the inside of the bearing so it doesn't touch the gear. And typically you would push from the outside edges of these bearings, but in this case, I'm going to push just from the inside, and I'm going to push this one out. The closed bearings, um, because there's like a ring of rust and dirt and, you know, just contaminants on this side, I'm actually going to press these from the outside in. So, and, and obviously I would use a corresponding socket that fits perfectly all the way around that and push those bearings this direction out. Then I'll sand the dirt and the, and the paint off the, uh, the edge. And then when I install the new bearing, I'll press it from the outside in. All right, so let me get this, let me get these bearings out and we'll take a look at what we have with the case. With all of the uh, bearings pushed out of the cases, both sides, um, we can take a look and see that what I was talking about right here this was a closed bearing and you can see there's a ring of paint and rust and dirt um, in these areas that one's not so bad uh, that one could be used could use some work essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some very fine sandpaper to sand this area out clean it up with maybe a scotch bright pad just to make sure that everything's good and clean and then I'm able to lubricate and then press the new bearings into the case from this side uh, and I won't be fighting this ridge of, of crap basically um, as you know, in the last video about this transmission, I did put the new axle bearings in, so those are all set. So essentially, all of the bearings, or all of the material bearings, I would say, are going to be replaced in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to clean this up, I'll show you the bearings and the part numbers, and then we'll start putting them back together. With all the uh, surfaces in the case uh, cleaned, we're ready to start to install the bearings themselves as you can see they, they cleaned up quite well uh, there's a little bit of staining right there from like some rust or grease but it's perfectly smooth and clean so I'm all set I'm happy with that when it comes to the bearings here are all the bearings that the, these are the these are the old bearings out of the case and those are the new bearings are just about ready to be installed I got all these bearings off of Amazon which it was the cheapest price. There, I couldn't find anywhere else a cheaper price other than, than on Amazon. And they came within two or three days, so I had everything. The only one that's a little iffy is the one in the bag. Um, if you're if a seller says you're going to sell a Koyo bearing or a Torrington bearing, just sell the day. I mean, I'm assuming that's a Koyo bearing back there, but they decided to just send it in a bag. So... Who knows who the maker of that particular bearing is. It's not marked um, other than the actual bearing number. 
So with that being said, this is the main brake shaft uh, Torrington bearings. They're both closed style. They actually go in these bigger holes here and here. And the uh, part number is M16121. And that, this one's specifically a Torrington bearing. This is the, I guess you call the brake shaft cluster gear uh, shaft. It goes in this lower section. There's one right here. Um, and then there's an open one on this end because this is where the brake shaft or the, the shaft for the brake drum comes out. So one's open, one's closed. The, uh, the closed one is right here. And the part number for that is M12121. And the open style is this one, which is the Torrington number B1210. Uh, so, and that's the correct size bearing. So that's, that's what that is. Now the input shaft, which runs from here uh, to here, this one's closed, this one's open because the, uh, the, the uh, input shaft pulley goes on that side. Uh, the closed bearing, which is right there, is a M10121, and the open is a B107. So those are the bearings in general. I am going to just blow out the cases with some compressed air, make sure there's no nothing in there, and then I'm going to start to install the bearings. The big thing about installing the bearings is do not press them beyond this inner surface, uh, and that goes for this case also. You just bring them just a hair, you know, inside, just inside this surface. Um, don't press them beyond that surface because then there, you may have some problems with the uh, shafts binding up. So we're going to get these in one by one. I'm going to press them all from the outside in, including the one that I pressed out or in to out. This one's going to get pressed out to in. We'll get those all put in. And then the cases should be all set to be started to be put back together. Down in the basement now, because it's too darn cold in my garage, all of the bearings are installed. And just to take a look here, I'm tip them up so we can see a little better inside. As you can see, I have each one of the bearings just a touch below the f internal face, uh, especially the closed ones. Now, the open ones, this is not that it's hard, but you just got to be mindful to make sure that they don't protrude past the face. But you also provide yourself with enough room right here in order to be able to install the grease seal or the oil seal. So basically, it's kind of like split the difference, measure your seal thickness, and make sure you got enough room in there so you can get that in place. As you can see, the new bearings are in. This one here is you know, appears to be pretty much pressed pretty far in, but when we flip the case over and we take a look at where it's positioned, it's positioned, in my opinion, perfectly. Same thing with this side case. Let's flip that up. We have what I think is adequate clearance on those. This one is just pushed in just enough, but it's it's just in from the face, just like I had indicated. The, if we flip it back over again, just to take a look, I have a good amount of room right there. Let's see if we can get this to focus for you. A uh, good amount of room so we can get that grease seal in place. The other, the other bearings are in. Everything looks really good. I'm real happy with this install. So basically, when it comes to the case halves, all the bearings have been replaced except for the big main carrier bearing, which really there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So that's that. All right. Well, there we go. 
that is just about ready to be put back together and everything reinstalled. I do have to clean up a little bit of a couple shafts and then I'll make a quick video of putting it back together. I'm not going to go through the entire process only because I just posted a video within the last, I'd say, what, 12 months or so of me putting this transmission back together. Um, so I'm not going to bore you to death. I'll just very quickly go over some of the little nuances to get an eight speed back together, number one, and then we'll show it to you all reinstalled on the tractor. All right, guys, thank you very much for your, for your support. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please, or you enjoyed it at least, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you like small engines, as all small engine rebuilds and repair, transmissions, uh, repair, things of that nature, please subscribe and, and click the bell so you get notified when my new video is uh, uploaded. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.